So I worked on a movie yesterday where I was called in to make some low-lying fog using dry ice and I had a bit of a leftover, so let's experiment with it. A question I was asking myself since I made that video about trying to poke a hole through starlight using my K40 laser cutter is if starlight has the same capabilities of insulating from the cold. Imagining starlight as an insulator for spaceflight, it would potentially work for heat insulation of a rocket engine, but when in space it would also be exposed to enormous heat differentials. So in this experiment I want to find out how starlight or homemade starlight performs when exposed to temperatures well below freezing. For this experiment I want to use this temperature sensor I had lying around as a spare of my K40 lasers cooling system. I am mixing up a small batch of homemade starlight using the same recipe as in my other starlight videos you can find on my channel. This recipe that consists of two parts cornstarch, one part baking soda and wood glue seems at least for my opinion work best. Once the dough is ready, I embed the sensor with the starlight and make sure that everything that will be in contact with dry ice is well coated. As suggested in the comments of the video where I tried to make a crucible out of starlight, this time I baked the finished product to get rid of any remaining moisture. Next I prepare an acetone bath. Other than water, acetone has a freezing point of minus 95 degrees centigrade, that's minus 139 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of dry ice lies around minus 79 degrees centigrade or minus 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So I create a chirogenic solution that gets almost as cold as an object in near Earth orbit that is shaded from the sunlight. Testing another spare temperature sensor to make sure it. Oh no! You how you are? You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because. Here is definitely a point that I have not thought through. Most sensors are not made to work in such cold environments. Luckily, my multimeter came with a temperature probe that is also more precise than this oven thermometer, and um, that goes way below the temperature I need to measure. Minus 79.4, that's close to what I was pointing to. Now even my starlight probe does not go below 0 degrees centigrade, I can still measure the time it takes to cool the sensor down from room temperature to the freezing point. Three minutes 29 seconds to detract 20 degrees centigrade from my starlight probe. A bit disappointing as starlight usually withstands a propane torch for minutes without much increasing heat on the backside. Notice how the acetone bath condensates moisture from around the cave. It is also cold enough to perform this classic liquid nitrogen trick. Back to my experiment, maybe this first test wasn't too fair as acetone might have gotten into the probe over time like water that gets absorbed by a sponge. So after letting the probe dry out again, I will now try the same setup by using only dry ice. Now that's a more pleasing result, 9 minutes 57 seconds. Compared, it took more than double the time as the submerged experiment. Considering we have a vacuum in space, the convective heat transfer submerged in a liquid is still way faster. As nighttime on the ISS space station, for example, takes around 46 minutes, at least homemade starlight would fail its purpose as an insulator against the cold from space. However, I achieved to freeze the probe rock solid. And no, I will not smash the sensor with a hammer. 
Thawing the probe back up to room temperature took 70 minutes 49 seconds by the way. And uh, here is some more dry ice fun. Next experiment, let's try to sublime dry ice on a sheet of starlights with the heat source underneath. I use my MRE Russian stove for this purpose and a candle. Of course I know that you had preferred a propane torch, but um, no, I don't have one on hand right now. To compare, I will put two pieces of dry ice next to it at room temperature and start the timer. Thirty-seven minutes, thirty-five seconds later, we have a clear result. Sure, the starlight resisted the candle flame, no problem, but it still heated up to forty-two degrees centigrade on the unexposed side, and so accelerated the sublimation process. Out of curiosity, I threw a piece of dry ice in the molten candle wax. Look what happened. Can you cut dry ice with a K40 laser cutter? Well, let's find out. I engrave three rectangles straight onto the dry ice pallets. Let's see what happens. Well, it did something. Even you can see the air assist melting some condensed water ice. The laser also leaves a line behind in the dry ice. Even though it did not at all burn through, I think we can say that yes, a CO2 or any other laser that generates enough heat can burn through dry ice. One last experiment I want to try is this UV bubble liquid that is supposed to make glowing soap bubbles. Using some near UV LEDs, I add some of the solution to some warm water and now add the dry ice. Hmm, well, there is an ever so slight glow to be seen with the naked eye, but, um, well, not on camera, and all in all, it's a little disappointing. Maybe I should add some concentrated UV color next time, but all in all, it is still a fun experiment. Now, playing with dry ice can be a lot of fun, but also, it still is frozen and solidified carbon dioxide that is a quite dangerous substance. I am always looking for a maximum of ventilation and um, store dry ice outdoors, especially overnight. Even you saw me handling dry ice without gloves, you can easily get freeze burn. That, in my opinion, is even more nasty than heat burns. So always think through what you do when playing around with this stuff. Until then, see ya.